Another great week of area high school football is in the books. Here's a look back at Friday's action on Fox 7 Friday football. High school ball, Coach Tanny, Tony Salazar and 12th rank Westlake hosting Ake in second play from scrimmage for the Shabs. Grady Bartlett pretty much untouched from 17 out, 7 zip. After a three and out for the Eagles, second play, second possession. Reese Wise to Cal living good, and he's running good. Or running well, however you want to say it. 14 zip Shabs. It would not get any better for the Eagles. Next Shabs possession. Oh my goodness, it's backup quarterback Boone Lackey to Grady Bartlett. You get the idea. Westlake winning 70 to nothing in the fourth. In South Austin, homecoming for Lehman. Lobo's off to an 0 and 5 start, but hey, homecoming's always fun anyway. Anderson already up 7 zip when Max Gerlich finds Ed Small with the 24 yard touchdown pass. 15 zip Trojans after the deuce. Those two just getting warmed up. Gerlich, nice deep ball to Small there in the Future TCU Horn Frog does the rest. Trojans are cooking. It's 57 7 in the third. Let's stay in District 8 5A and head over to Bible Stadium where you had the Leander Lions and the Glenn Grizzlies going at it. Leander strikes first. Check out senior quarterback Logan Mitchell. Breaks a tackle and yeah, he's off to the races. Mitchell taking this one to the house from 70 yards out. Lines up 7 nothing early. Grizzlies running back Keaton Gordon saying anything you can do, I can do better. He goes right up the gut then outruns the defender on his way to a 73-yard touchdown run. That ties it up at 7 to Peace still in the first quarter, but the Lions weren't done. They answer as Mitchell hits a wide open Isaac Montgomery, and the sophomore receiver takes over from there. He scores from 72 yards out. Definitely a lot of long touchdowns in this one. Leander takes care of business, winning at 44 to 35. Lions now three and two overall, two and zero oh in district play. Dennis on Dripping Springs with hopes of contending for a district title as always, and as always, Tigers. We'll have to deal with district behemoths, Lake Travis and Westlake to do it. Still a couple of weeks before they have to play either the Cavs or Shaps. They will get both at home, by the way. That'll help a little. Tigers hosting Austin High on homecoming. Both won their district openers last week. Quite a sequence for Drift in the first. Tiger quarterback Maddox Marr gets it to Nick Tyndall. He's gone. Seven zip dripping springs. And then you have the young man who would be homecoming king. Senior DB Jackson Mills with the big pick just before being named homecoming king at halftime. That's cool. Sets up Mar to Merrick Bloomgren, splitting the defenders. Nice 25-yard tutty. Two scores in roughly 20 seconds of game clock. It's 14 zip drip. Austin High answers. Logan Davis fakes out the target for Cliff Thornton. Cliff wrote this, so he's basically calling himself out. Davis faked out everyone, actually. On the way to an 80-yard touchdown, 14-7 drip. But it's old reliable Jack Tendall answering for the Tigers with the 33-yard rumble for six. Dripping Springs rolls to the 49-7 win. McNeil got back on track last week by blowing out Stony Point. Mavs hosting Vandegrift. Vipers strike first. Fourth and one from the five. Brendan Fournier wants the whole five. Touchdown right up the gut. Seven zip Vandy. Worked well once. Why not do it till they stop it, right? Fournier again between the tackles. Short touchdown. 14 zip Vipers mid second. More where that came from. Vipers win it 28 zip. Yeah, they're starting to look like their usual dominant selves after that early season upset loss to Cedar Park. Any idea which area team is the highest ranked squad in the state? Two splitting the honor for now. We already mentioned one. Lexington ranked third in 3A Division II. And the LBJ Jaguars are number three in 4A D1. That ranking comes after the J went 4-0 against a tough non-district schedule that included state-ranked Wimberley and the state's best private school program, Dallas Parish Episcopal. LBJ opening district play against the 4-1 Travis Bunch. Rebs with three shutouts this season, but they hadn't scored on LBJ in any of the last seven matchups. Jags setting the tone right out of the gate. Caleb Crenshaw, 32 yards up the middle, untouched. 7-zip LBJ early first. Soon after, quarterback Ali Scott finds Javarlin Smith for the nice 20-yard touchdown. That's worth dancing about a little bit. 14-zip Jag still in the first. Scott spreading the wealth. Hits Antoine Baker, who sprints in from 20 yards out. This one getting out of hand early. Jags jump out to a 29-0 first quarter lead. 
when Scott rolls and hits Smith for their second touchdown hookup of the night. The Jay wins big again, 50 to 3-8. At least like, at least Travis got on the board this time. Let's stay in 4A. Gerald hosting Lago Vista, both 4-1. Both won their district openers. Both solid bets to make the playoffs behind Wimberley. Gerald strikes first. Third and 14, Jason Hobbs is going to get a lot more. Made a couple Vikings miss and is gone. 75-yard touchdown run, 7-zip. Cougars later in the first, 7-3. Guess who? It's Hobbs again. Bouncing through the line. This time, he rolls 68 yards to pay dirt. So, do the math, Hobbs, with 143 yards on his first two carries. Pretty good average. Later, Lago smelling the end zone, but on fourth and two from the six, nothing doing. Gerald, senior linebacker, Hayden Dotson leading that charge. Gerald wins it 35 to 16. Here's a look at last Friday's Fox 7 Friday football game of the week. Cedar Park and Rouse, who won their district openers last week, hooking up for the first time since 2019, renewing this one-sided rivalry that's been dominated by the Timberwolves, who came into this one a perfect 10-0 versus the Raiders. So would Rouse put an end to that losing streak? Not if Cedar Park running back Trey Hill had anything to say about it. Fourth play of the game, he gets outside, then cruises in for the 46-yard touchdown to put the T-Wolves up. 7-0, just like that. Then on their next drive, they get it done through the air as David Cooper connects with Zane Claybrook for the seven-yard score. Cedar Park now up 14-zip. Rouse responds as London Morgan hooks up with Cameron Cook. He breaks a tackle, caps off a 10-play, 75-yard drive with this 38-yard touchdown. But the T-Wolves answer with a 13-play, 76-yard drive. Cameron Graham finishing things off there. Cedar Park takes it 35-25. They're now 3-2 overall, 2-0 in district play.